our generation is slowly slipping away. Mm -hmm. They're being snatched. They're being attacked. They're being um, trafficked. And so if they're gone, who is going to be there for us leading the next generation? So this is something that is so important. This is something that, as a community, we need to get behind. And I'm so excited to see our youth, and we're going to have more youth and more youth and yes. more youth. This is just beginning. This yes. is just the grassroots. Yes. These are the pioneers, and we're going to go forth because we're no longer going to be silent. We're no longer going to say it's okay to just watch and look at the news and say, oh, my gosh. But no, we're here because we're going to do something. So I'm going to shut up because I can talk and talk and talk. <laughs> I'm going to give it to Reverend Q. Reverend Q is in control. This is her platform. Oh, my daughter's here. I'm sorry. I'm so excited. She told me she was going to be here. Okay, so I'm just I'm giving it to Reverend Q, and it's in her hand. Okay. Well, let's give Pamela a big hand. Right, it takes a vision to uh, to do what we're doing here. I know that speaker may be in the way of some from seeing. So, um, uh, Chris, if we could, um, we're I'm just excited about again. My name is Reverend Q English. I chair the New York City Faith Based Coalition Against Human Trafficking and Domestic Violence. I'm also the founder of the Not on My Watch Safe Haven Network International, and we're gonna talk about you know, what that is, but the reason we're here, and again, this is for our youth, but it's also for our parents. It's also for our teachers, and it's also for our people that live here in New York City that are witness to these atrocities day in and day out. And uh, we, 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 I can tell about the stories that we've had even right here in the Bronx. How many heard the story a couple of days ago about the van? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and so there, there is a need, and I was sharing with someone, I said, you know, there's nothing more powerful than education. Education, training, education, training, and the reason why we don't do more is because we don't know the more to do. <laughs> and once we can get our arms around the more that needs to be done, the more we can be effective in um, combating these atrocities right here in our city. So I just want to, first and foremost, I want everyone in this place to give a hand for every youth that are sitting at a table. And then youth, I want you to give a hand for everyone that think they're still youth, but also our adults. Come on, let's give it up. We know you, so it's okay, right? That's wonderful. And so and I, right now, I want to acknowledge those that are part of our network that's represented here today. I have with us our amazing, incredible, my citywide vice chair that puts it down in training and domestic violence. I hang out in HT. Let's, Doreen Lassane, would you stand and can we give her a hand? <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, we also have Chris James. I did just see Chris. Chris James, <laughs> who is right here, our vice chair in the Bronx. And he has an amazing uh, story that he tells from his background of being the other side as a male victim. And it's a powerful story. So you definitely want to come through the trainings that we do have um, that's coming up April 29th, May 6th, and May 20th. It's a three day training, and we would love to see you there. And then we have our Not on My Watch newly formed the Youth Council. Just a few of you, would you just stand so we can just give you a hand those that are here tomorrow. And then my other amazing announcement, I was trying to wait for Maria Perez to arrive. Did she arrive yet? So Maria Perez, along for this amazing Pamela, who's already doing her thing in her own right, are now going to be the co-chairs of the Youth Council for the Not On My Watch movement. So can we give them a hand? So these are people that are gonna particularly focus just on youth and wrapping our arms around them and doing what we need to do to assure their safety and empowering them to create safety for themselves. So we're gonna go right into uh, part of my um, presentation. We do have of another representative coming who got turned around on the train. So she'll be here shortly from um, Safe Horizon. And so who we are, 
We're a network of houses of worship throughout New York City committed to serve as safe havens for victims and survivors of human trafficking and domestic violence. And it's recognized and we work in collaboration with service providers as well as city agency. Because um, it's our belief that you know we should take the lead in combating these atrocities, and so we actually our network. Uh, my coalition is over 200. We have educated, I mean, over the past couple of years, over 1,200, over 1,200 to 1,700 individuals. We just had our graduation. How many see any graduates here in the house? We had about 150 that went through the graduation in January. And we're very intentional about this, um, simply because it is something that um, a lot of us do not recognize as being as severe as it really is, because we think of it as a third world country, and it really is a, uh, an, um, an atrocity that just happens in third world countries, but it actually happens right here in our backyard. I remember in 2013 or 14, it was reported and reported. Reported means simply, you never just look at reported numbers because you're missing a whole population of whether it's the immigrant population or those that don't even know they're being trafficked, right? So I remember one year they were reported that we had lost over 2,300 children, average age 12 to uh, 14, to sex trafficking in New York City. Let me say it again. It was reported that we lost over 2,300 children, average age 12 to 14, to sex trafficking in New York City in one year. Those numbers are not real. I work very closely with Inspector James um, Klein, who's over Vice, and his team, and they normally come to every event that I host, and they weren't able to be with me today. But can we just take a moment to applaud the NYPD representative that I here with us today? And that's very, very important because what it's going to take for us to be effective in combating these atrocities is for every single one of us working together from community-based organizations, faith-based organizations, NYPD, service providers, grassroots organizations, mom and pa, sister, brother, and the children themselves. So I'm going to throw out a real quick quiz and we're going to see if you can answer it. It's just basically true or false. You ready? We know how many people are being trafficked in the world, true or false? false. The majority of those in prostitution chose that lifestyle. False. Generally, those most at risk of sex trafficking are middle class Caucasian girls on holiday in Europe. False. It's false. That's why you're here. Oh, somebody said true. Oh. Okay, she's like, please, don't call me. She's seen the movie. I know they had a movie like that. Well, but it is, it's true when it's... It's not it's true that they are the most at true. risk oh, of sex most, trafficking. I don't know. I okay, they are not most at risk. How many want to tell me, who do you think are most at risk to being particularly black and brown? We top the charts in sex trafficking victims. Human trafficking is the second fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. True. False. It is the first. Oh. We exceeded gun trafficking wow. recently. Wow. We lose about two children every hour to sex trafficking globally. True. We, lose about, we lose about two children every minute. True. True. So it's false. We don't lose two children every hour. We lose globally approximately two children every minute. So I'm very, I'm very aware in my settings, if I'm spending two hours with you, I've lost 240 children to sex trafficking. People generally have an idea that they are being trafficked. No. No. Very good. Victims are generally trafficked by strangers. False. 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 Victims are generally Trafficked by people that they know. Case in point, I had a 12-year-old in Queens, school's out, mama said come home, she was grown, she was hanging out with her 12-year-old friend from the school. And so she ignored the calls her mama was making on her cell phone because she felt like she had this. And so she went with her friend 
And they sat together and they went to his house, actually went to his brother's house. And there she, they got her drunk. And when she woke up, she was a captive in her, their care right here in Queens, New York. And they couldn't find her. And she lived in Queens. So they kept her in an abandoned building only to either take her out to do the acts on her and or to beat her. And so this was a, a situation where she knew the trafficker, where she trusted him, youth, my young, beautiful girls, as their friends. And the danger was she didn't answer the phone when her mom had called. The danger was she didn't go home at the appointed time. That was the danger. And the third danger was following in him into a house that was of her, his brothers that she had never been. Watch the signs. Next. A James is someone that pays money for sex. No. What are they called? John. Forgive me if your name is James or John. <laughs> Victims are generally excited to be rescued by the authorities. No. no. No, because there's something that, and we'll talk about it so later, sad. sometimes it's like trauma bonding. Like they come together from acts of trauma and fear. So when the victim is being arrested, she wants to or he wants to be there with the guy, even though he's misusing her right. because he's already entered right. into a state oh. of trauma oh. and is fearful. And now she has now thought, that, that pain that she's feeling and that hitting that she's, um, uh, that she's um, feeling is love. And so now her whole message of love is very, very confusing. Are you hearing me, you? Let me hear you say yes. 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 Only girls are trafficked for sex. No. No. Very good. Victims of sex, tra sex trafficking are generally treated as such by the authorities. Now that's a true and false because now in New York City, we're starting to do a much better where we now recognize that these people that are being trafficked, we don't call them prostitutes, we call them sex slaves, right? Those that are being trafficked, they're victims and not criminals. And sometimes we found that, that they've been treated as criminals, but times are changing. They are victims. We even passed the Trafficking Victim Protection Justice Act that we worked really hard, that literally adopts that language. So we are making strides. And this new NYPD vice squad is really intentional about helping these children and adults, because it's not just children, um, and adults come out of the life. Okay, so the Super Bowl is the third largest incident of human trafficking in the U.S. True or false? False. Oh. It is the first. The Super Bowl is the first largest incident of human trafficking in the United States. So when we hosted it here, where was it? In New Jersey? Disastrous. Disastrous. There was reports on what was taking place. And I'm not just talking about taking place with those that voluntarily, and they don't realize there's nothing really voluntary, uh, those that are in the lifestyle, but also of our children. And the amount of hotels that turn a blind eye to these yeah. atrocities. Yeah. But we're going to do something about Thank that. Amen. So there are 150,000 victims in the U.S. alone. False. Right, 1.5 million in the U.S. alone, and that's a low number. Again, when you think of reporting, this is bare bottoms base, okay? Because none of us have done an effective job, okay, of really determining our numbers, and that's what has to change. There are at least, and this is a half people in slavery today, or half amount of people in slavery today as it was over 150 years ago when Lincoln abolished slavery. Slavery was abolished over 150 years ago and there are more people in slavery today than at any other time in history. And this is a reality. So, you know, we're hitting it here from the global perspective, but can you just say, in my backyard, in my backyard. That's where it's occurring. 
Okay? And a lot of us think, you know, it's a third world country um, occasion, uh, uh, atrocity, as I said before, but you'll be surprised what's happening even in our NYCHA buildings. You'll be surprised what's happening with those um, young men that are in gangs. That, are, that has increased as well, the sex trafficking yep. within gangs. You'll be surprised what's happening in the, in the, in the uh, parlors and the nail parlors and the massage shops. And the one thing I want to share with you, and this may just blow your bubble right out the water, is that if you're shopping down in Chinatown and buying those knockoff bags, I am going to encourage every single one of us to buy no more because that is supporting and providing support for human trafficking. Okay, next. So I'm going to give you a broadband definition of human trafficking. And then we're going to break it down, okay? And then we're going to continue. And this is important that we have this whole definition because a lot of us just think, oh, it's human trafficking years when the person just goes out, you know, and prostitute themselves, you know. Because back in the day, what was it? It was the fishnet stocking, the red dresses, and the high heel pat leather shoes. And then it was the daddy with the hats on. Papa was a rolling stone. You know, back in the day, it was that. But that's not what's happening today. Today, there's a heavy social media influence. Heavy social media influence in the sex trafficking trade. Okay, so here's the definition. And so youth, you're going to be tested on this. The UN defines human trafficking as the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of persons by means of the threat or use of force or other forms of coercion, of abduction, of fraud, of deception, of the abuse of power, or of a position of vulnerability, or of the giving or receiving of payments, it sounds like a lot, but it is a lot, or benefits to achieve the consent of a person having control over another person. Here's the purpose. The whole purpose will always, always, always be for exploitation. And exploitation shall include, at a minimum, the exploitation of the prostitution of others or other forms of sexual exploitation. It's forced labor, two parts to human trafficking. There's labor trafficking and there's sex trafficking. For services, slavery or practices similar to slavery, servitude or the removal of organs. What do you think they do with the organs? They sell them on the black market. Where do you think that's happening? All over. All over. Okay, all over. So let's read the definition together. And do I have my middle and high schoolers here? Let me have one middle and high schooler come up and volunteer and read this for me. Come on up. Okay, here you go. The undefined human trafficking no, as you a UN. The United Nations defines human trafficking as a recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of persons by means of the threat or use of force or other forms of coercion. Oh, I coercion. Coercion. Coercion of abduction or fraud, of deception of the abuse of power, or of a position of vulnerability or of the giving or receiving of payments or benefits to achieve the constant of a person having control over another person. For the purpose of exploitation, exploitation shall include at a minimum the, ex the exploitation of the prostitution of others or other forms of sexual exploration, expo exploitation, forced by labor or services. Slavery or practices similar to slavery, servitude, or the removal of organs. Very good. Come on, let's give her a hand. Very good. Now I'm going to break this down on another slide. Who's going to be my next brave youth to come up to read the next slide? Come on up. So we're looking at sex trafficking in three parts because I want you to be able to recognize this, okay? So that when you come across it, is Kim here yet? Yes. Okay, great. Because I want you to be able to recognize it. And so that when your senses go up, you'll be able to say, wait a minute, I just came from a place that, that just told me this. That has to 
be a matter of trafficking. How many heard about the story, the flight attendant, who was a brave woman who was able to notice the young teenager sitting next to a, a guy that was well-dressed and her inner was telling her that she was being trafficked and she was absolutely right. So I'm going to have her read the three parts and these are what I want you to think of. You're going to think about what is done because any one of these things that are being done they're being trafficked, okay? So she's going to talk about what is done, which is called the act. You're going to talk about how it's done, which is called the means. Very good. We're going to talk about why it is done, which is the purpose. So what's the act? What is done. What's the means? How is it done. The purpose. Why is it done. Okay, go ahead and read. Um, that act, what is done. Recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of persons. The means. How is it done? Which is the threat or use of force, co uh, coercion, coercion, abduction, fraud, deception, abuse of power or vulnerability, or given payments or belief uh, benefit to a person in control of the victim. The purpose, why is it done? For the purpose of exploitation, which includes expo exploiting the prostitution of other sexual expo exploitation, Forces har forced harbor, slavery, forced labor, forced labor. forced labor, slavery, or similar practices, and the removal of organs. Okay, right. let's give her a hand. Very good. Thank you. So that's what you're gonna. These are your. This is what you're looking for to de to summarize the definition. What is done? How it's done? And the purpose. Uh, there is a case study that my partner from Safe Haven. I'm not going to go into my case study. I'm going to leave it for her to do hers. Uh, so that we can uh, be cognizant of time, but we're gonna we're gonna share a story, and we're gonna be able to break it down to determine whether or not that person was a victim of sex trafficking or labor trafficking, and why. Next. Okay, so we already talked. Human trafficking is a global problem. We also talked about human trafficking is a local problem. Some of the things right here in the Bronx. Are we all Bronxites here? Who here is not from the Bronx? Okay. What, what borough are you from? Oh, I feel sorry. <laughs> White, oh, Westchester. Okay, so you represent. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Manhattan? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Brooklyn in the house. Okay, that's why. <laughs> Brooklyn and Bronx. It's like two different worlds, isn't it, Noel? Okay, so we're going to do that case study. When you, you go back up, please. When you think about the local problem, I want, you know, we heard the incident of, you know, the van trying to abduct the girl who actually ran. We heard that same incident take place in Queens. It's happening all over. I am almost lost a first grader by being recruited by a fourth grader. I'm not, I'm not biting my tongue. And he did it in the Harlem. And the way he did it was the line he used. And the line he used simply was, did your mother give you lunch money? No, I don't know. Let me show you where you can get lunch money and more. All you have to do is program. Program, right? And obviously it was a trafficker that was in his family. And the reason why there was no alarm is because the child was on the steps. He wasn't officially in the building, right? And so the mother, who was a member of my house of worship, pulled away and then came back because she felt like, you know, let me just check on him. And then that's when they found out, she had found out what had occurred. It's happening everywhere, it's happening everywhere. So I was sitting in my house of worship, and there was a, one of my members, you know, she sat there in the middle of a conversation, she gets a text from the school, alerting her to the van that's, uh, you know, that's been patrolling the school, and, um, and, and um, two boys were able, you know, to run away from them. And so what we have to do, we have to be, there's two things. There's prevention and there's intervention, right? So on the prevention side, we got to educate our children now. Say now. now. I'm not talking about tomorrow, I'm not talking about the next day. I mean now. Now. now, now, now. We got to do more in the area of prevention. Intervention is necessary, right? But prevention is powerful. Yes. Looking at these girls here, these guys here, let me see the two bold young boys that decided to come to, that came today. Stand up. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, we'll press it We do our thing. Right? He said, yeah, because, you know, we have to learn how to respect girls, you know. We have to, you know. And it's so, I a, a love the idea that they're gravitating toward that now. Okay. And so it's a local problem locally in the Bronx. I, you know, we got to create.
bring a huge movement around Sin City. Hello. Right down there on, um, I think it's Bruckner. <laughs> they got their license renewed, but what's been going on in there? Come on, they, 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 they're not ready for us yet, but they will be in a few. Because we're building an army, and they can't take the army, especially an army of light and salt, salt and light. Are you with me? Okay, next. Okay, so the average age of the pit recruits a girl into prostitution, uh, shared hope in the national 11 to 14. Human trafficking is the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. Next. Um, I'm going to have our person's going to, uh, Noelle's going to talk more about taking a look at the victim, but it can be anyone, anywhere, in any neighborhood. You've got runaways that's been forced into the life, little to no family life. They're victims of circumstance. A lot of things are happening in their home. And do we have any educators here? Any teachers? Teacher. Okay, great. I mean, when we think about, great, when we think about the educators and the teachers that are here, you know, we got to recognize that sometimes these kids act out in class not necessarily because they're quote-unquote a bully. You don't know. They could have been home the night before, witnessed their father knock their mother's teeth out, and so they get to your classroom and they're acting out, and the first thing you want to do is send them to the principal office or give them a timeout. I don't know if we still do that today. But whatever it is that we do in those classrooms, we got to recognize that sometimes it's time to some very deep, sensitive, sensitive issues. And I, my, 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 um, my vice chair, she teaches on that very extensively and, so she, and, and for, for a lot of different reasons, so I won't go into that right now. And then we're looking at those that are vulnerable. That's why it's important for us to teach our children how to respect themselves. We need to teach them how to love themselves. We need to teach them how to build their self-esteem. Are you with me? There was a girl in Hunter College that was actually trafficked while in school. While in school, the entire time graduated, did well, but she lived a, 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 a violent life. She was beaten, if not every other day, every day by her trafficker, but somehow was able to still maintain. But she said the reason why she was a victim and the reason why she was a uh, uh, Approach was because she had, she was vulnerable in how she thought about herself and how she felt about herself. She couldn't even look you in the eye, you know, when she was younger. She would hold her head down when she would speak. See, there are masters, pimps and traffickers are masters at manipulation. And so they prey on that a certain type of victim. Next. So who are the traffickers? Everyone. We got men and women, all ages, all ethnicities. They're masters of the art and seduction. They're able to identify the vulnerabilities of a specific person and exploit them. And once seduced, pimp use torture tactics and manipulation to control their victims. And then sometimes you look at some of these victims and you find you you ask yourself, you know, you know, just slay them, you know. And it's no different than domestic violence. You know, there's such an overlap in that. So just like we say, the question. You don't ask the domestic violence, is it why did you stay? It's why can't you leave? Yes. Right. right? And that's the same type of question in the trafficking. And some of you, you know, we judge our those that are in the life as if they are not victims. But you got to recognize there's been a lot that transpired to get them to that point. I just want you to see some of the tattoos and branding. See? Daddy, Day Day, the crown. This is pretty common right here. The barcode. Okay. Writing, life is pain. It's all about branding. It's all about branding. I just want you to take a look at this because to be honest with you, when I was not educated, I came across this and totally dismissed it because I didn't know. Knowledge is power. We can't do something about something that we don't know about. But once we become aware, we can do more. This is a good place for Kim. Would you come up? And this is a person that actually went through our training. I'm just going to have a share just for a few minutes before I continue. Okay. 